So some people have asked, how do you make that cable that makes the lights light up on the Lynx distributor? Today, I'm going to show you. We're putting together another system for an industrial commercial application. So I figured now would be a great time to go over it. So let's quickly go over the things you're going to need to do this. You're going to need the uh, four conductor RJ11 style connector. I think it's basically a phone cable. And we're going to be cutting this in half. So I make a lot of these, so usually I make two per. So I got a lot of spares. You're going to need one of these uh, voltage adapters. I get these off of Amazon. Like, oh, and they come four to a pack. This is what they end up looking like. Uh, I recommend some kind of soldering iron. I use a little battery powered one like this. I actually have lithium batteries inside here. It normally takes double A's. Works really good for this little stuff. You're gonna need some solder. And I really recommend some kind of flux. Actually, this is my old container. Probably still use it anyway. Uh, some helping hands are also very nice. And then uh, a couple different sizes of heat shrink tube. I got some thicker stuff here and some thinner stuff. These are both, uh, they have the glue inside, so it's completely watertight when we're done. And the last thing is two of these 5 16 uh, ring terminals. And some wire cutters, things like that, crimpers, utility knife. I'm probably forgetting some other things, so uh, let's get to it in my messy, messy shop. On my little box where I keep all the tools to do this, I made myself a little drawing that I will include in the uh, either web page that this is on or the video description. It just helps me know what is what because uh, specifically on this cable you, we use the black and yellow wires. So let's get started with that. So step one. Cut that. And then I like to just take a utility knife on it. That'll let me pull it apart. We're looking for the yellow and the black wires. Almost got them all. There we go. And the other ones we don't really care about at all. Sorry, Christmas colors. You gotta go. I wish you could see how I have to stand to do this, to have my camera in front of this. It's uh, a little tricky. So I don't have some wire strippers, and this wire is so thin. Well, I do have wire strippers, but this wire is so thin. <sighs> Come on. Sometimes these... The smallest ones rarely work, so stripping this wire can be tricky. But there we go. Got one. I should get a pair. I'm doing this enough now. But I'm stubborn. There we go. So that's what you want those to look like. And I save all my soldering until the end, but I do, if I'm thinking about it, I will put a little flux on here. And all that does is it helps the solder flow a little bit better. Where'd my helping hands go? There they are. So, put that right there. And according to my drawing over here, the, uh, yeah, the step down voltage is on the little end. The supply voltage is on this end. And I think these are actually good up to like 32 volts. Uh, you wanna fact check me on that though. So those, the insulation on these is super soft. You can almost pull it off. So on this side, it's not going to take long at all. So I just like to just get them roughly close together to start. Let's get this a little more in view. But before we do that, we need some heat shrink. So. I take a little bit of each 
or sorry, two little pieces here. And slide that down here. There we go. I think we're ready to make some magic happen. Obviously black to black and unobviously red to yellow, but being that there's only two options, it makes it much easier. So the reason I use a battery powered soldering iron for this a lot of times is because I'm doing it out in the field or uh, somewhere and I don't have power available. But I do have my torch with, so sometimes I will preheat this and then the battery has less work to do. Like so. So what I like to do first is tin each of the wires and tinning is just putting a little bit of solder on each wire. I'm get these a little bit closer. There we go. Let's get, and I try and make this connection as straight as possible. That one is made. And come on. And, oh, that was too quick. Let's hold it. And that one's made. Easy peasy. Oh, was that a little quick on the, ah, uh, you know what? The heat shrink will cover that up. We don't gotta worry about it. And then just shrink it up. Let's see, I don't know if you can see there. The glue is starting to push out. So that means it's completely insulated and watertight. I also have a little bit of a hookup wire that I'll use. Just take off, uh, I don't know, about that much, we'll call it. And this you gotta strip back. At least just a little bit. Oop. Well, I stripped too much there. Let's try that again. That's better. That's what we're looking for. So this is gonna be the 12 volt supply. There we go. A little tinning on that. Or, uh, sorry, not tinning, but uh, flux. Now, on, this is going to be the connection that connects to both the positive and negative on the links. So, okay, I ended up pulling these straight out. Of, I don't know why it's just giving me fits today. So, um, these are where my terminals are going to connect to. Gonna strip a little bit of this wire. And maybe a little bit more. Sure. And then I like to not clip off both of these ends at the same time because then it helps me remember which end is for which. So again, this is we're hooking up the supply wires. Might not be my best soldering job. Again, I'm kind of in a contorted position, but I'm doing it for you. I think that, and then I'll do it on the soldering side. Okay. in good shape there. Now to keep all of these, because uh, this is kind of a fragile situation there, so that's where 
the thicker heat shrink tube comes in and I'd like to grab enough to cover all of the components. Go over all of it. You do want to make sure you leave you just want to make sure you got enough leads at the end to get the both to the negative and the positive on the Lynx distributor. And I like to make sure that it's at least covered up there. So look in good shape. So I just start from here. In the middle somewhere. A lot of times when I'm doing these, I'll make up a whole bunch at a time, but I'm kind of at a time crunch here, so I'm only going to do this one. And you can see some of the glue starting to ooze out there. That's good. That means that's sealed up here. And these are around my other connection, so that made, has made a seal there. And the last little thing, all i got to do... Just do a crimp connection here. I think I'd probably like to move to uh, crimp connectors that also have heat shrink on them. So I would probably recommend that if I was doing these. But I have these, so this will work. All right, now I always check them all. That's good. So, there's the cable. It's all said and done. And then uh, we'll install it. Show you how it works. So here's uh, Link's distributor. We're gonna go on the input side there. Now the trickiest thing about this is when you're routing the cable is I, I usually like to, well, I don't know where. It can go up here. See, there's these light tubes here. That's what makes things light up. And those correspond to LEDs down here, so you don't want to block any of those. i got a couple of things going on here. So, you just don't want to block that when you put this on there. Actually, it's going to go this way, isn't it? Okay. Ooh. So, we got a lot of things on here. We're adding one more. There we go. And we're going to split some of those on either side of that fuse. And we got a couple of negative negatives to land from other devices and components that are around. The project we're working on is uh, it's actually pretty fun. I hope to share about it someday. I don't particularly like having to load everything up on this common negative down here, but it does make things a little bit easier on the maintenance side if you ever got to open this up, rather than using one of the other common lugs or terminals. I think that's all my negatives. I do have a loose positive around. Now in this case, we're only actually using two terminals of the Lynx distributor, but I am I do have fuses on each one, otherwise they will light up red, and that's not good. It kind of defeats the purpose of letting you know which one is blown or not. Sorry, right, we'll come back when I get power to this. All right, we got power hooked up. Let's give it a try. If you do that, that means it's working. There you go, see? That's what you're after. Thank you for watching. If you need help designing, estimating, or installing your RV or off grid solar system, contact us on our website, sodasolar.com. If you like watching, please subscribe or comment. It helps build our channel.